everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we're talking about HMA Heavy Metal Axe. If you're here because you think that's something to do with rock music, I'm afraid you're in the wrong place, but hang out anyway. I made a few videos on HMA. HMA stands for Heavy Metal Axe. It's a filter that takes the heavy metals and all the other nasties out of your tap water. So when you're doing a water change in your aquarium, you don't need to use the chlorinator or anything like that. It can go straight in. This is fish room files number two. So we're going to change the filters in the HMA, talk a little bit about it and its uses and how it might help you, whether you've got a fish room or just one aquarium. So I actually have a couple of HMAs. One of them is down here hiding in this mess. Um, and then I've got another one that runs my display tank upstairs. This one filter runs the entire fish room, all 30 tanks or whatever it is. Uh, lets me do water changes, I do automatic water changes, I do manual water changes. Um, I'm trying to think of a third type of water change, but can't. But if I could, it would do that as well. In its most basic form, an HMA is a filter that takes your tap water and makes it ready for your aquarium. So normally when you're doing water changes and things like that, it's a very good idea to make sure you use a water conditioner uh, or a dechlorinator or whatever it is that you call it wherever you live. But the difference with an HMA is it's not adding anything to your aquarium to make it safe. You're actually taking out the toxins before you put them in. So rather than adding extra chemicals, no need. An HMA consists of basically a three-stage filter. Sometimes you get two and one stage ones, but the ones I'm talking about today is a three-stage filter. Number one is a sediment filter. Number two is a carbon granule filter. And number three is a carbon block filter. So essentially you're running your water in one end and then it comes out the other end clean and safe. I'm not going to go into the detail too much, but the makeup specifically of these cartridges can be different depending on your application. But they're readily available. You can see all the information on the internet, but your sediment filter, you can get 10 micron, five micron, two micron. The smaller the micron count, obviously the better it filters things out. So the fewer things are going to get passed. Your carbon, uh, some people run two carbon blocks. Some people run two carbon granules. Some people run various different types and sizes and specifications of carbon to remove more or less depending on their use fit. But in general, if you go on, um, I'll put some links in the description, Amazon or eBay, looking for an HMA filter, it will fit 90% of your needs. And um, just going with the standard stuff. Flow rates is the next consideration. So these are the 10 inch cartridges. You can get 20 inch cartridges. You can, in fact, you can get all kinds of cartridges these days. And the reason cartridge size makes a difference is because flow rates are quite important with HMA filters. So some of them will be rated for a flow rate of four liters per minute, 10 liters per minute, 20 liters, whatever it is, depending on the size of the cartridge and the filter cartridges you're using, will give you your desired output. So you can't run it at full blast expecting to remove all the chlorine or chloramines from your, your aquarium, unless you have the cartridges rated for that flow rate. But in my fish room, the flow rates that I get out of this is more than enough to do nice leisurely water changes. So the HMA filter is made up of these three cartridges. So you've got your sediment, your carbon block, and your activated carbon granules or GAC filter as it's sometimes called. And um, water flows through that way, nice water comes out. But basically it's the first three stages of an RO filter. An RO filter might have RODI stuff and a couple of extra bits attached to it, but this is all you need to get this kind of clean water for your aquarium. Again, the lifetime for these, I try and change them every six months. The filter cartridges, the new cartridges that you buy, will generally tell you on them what they're rated for, whether it's time or an amount of water that passes through them or something like that. Um, but I've had a text message from my water company to say they're going to start cleaning the pipes soon. So I'm getting ahead of the game. These have been in for three months, maybe, maybe four months at the outset. I'm just changing them to make sure that I've got the most protection for my water. But if we compare the first filter so this is the sediment filter. This is a five micron sediment filter, same as this one. In three or four months, that's what it's pulling out of your water. Why wouldn't you use this? Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty grim. It doesn't smell or anything, but it's, it's not great. Um, I know a lot of people have started using these. You can get the house systems with the bigger versions, so you can use it on your tap water, so the water you're drinking is nicer because it's not like i say it's not treating the water it's removing things from the water so let's get these swapped over swapping over is really just as easy as replacing sediment goes in that one block in that one granules in that one and 
I'm not changing, I'm not brand loyal to any of these. They all do roughly the same sort of thing. The water I have here is pretty good anyway. There's very little chlorine or chloramines in it anyway. So I don't really need anything more specialized. Like I say, your use case may vary. You might want to get bigger cartridges. You may want to get different uh, active cartridges. Check it out yourself. This might be a good moment to say, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, then you're the same as about 70% of my viewers. You don't subscribe to these videos. If you could and you don't mind, please give it a click. It doesn't cost anything, absolutely free. Really supports the channel. Thank you very much. So my top tip for getting these reinstalled is if you can get the housing off the wall, turn it upside down and fit the cartridges in and then screw it down. Just a little bit easier to seat. I like to get them hand tight and then just use the wrench to tighten them up fully. And then when we turn the water on, you really want to run it through for a bit. So run off of 10, 20 liters or so just to get any dust or crap that you've built up in there out of the system. And then it's good to go. So, swapped over, didn't flood the fish room. It's got to be a first time for everything. But let's talk about the applications. If you have a fish room, it's a bit of a no-brainer. So you can take the, the output from your HMA filter, you can section it off, tee it off into multiple things with valves and things into all your fish tanks. And it's just a case of turning a valve to do a refill. No messing about with the chlorinator. You can even attach hot water to it so you can run it through at the temperature that you want it to do. I have my fish rooms running off a shower valve, just a normal shower valve, which spits the water temperature out at whatever temperature I want. Don't need to age water, have barrels of water sitting around, bringing it up to heat before I can use them in a water change. Dead simple. But even if you only have one, I still think it makes sense. Um, from just having it like this, dipping this into the end of the tank to do your refill, that's fine. Quick addition of something like this, which is a float valve, which is literally just push this on the end and then you can kind of set and forget. So you put that on the rim of your aquarium and when this goes up, it turns the water off. No more worrying about that. Um, automatic water changes now. Automatic water changes, whether you're doing it in one tank or multiple tanks, they are a godsend. It just takes so much of the faff out of fish keeping that you don't need to do water changes very often because they're always happening. So I'll take my discus tank for instance. I have a permanently attached um, little pipe which sits clipped to the side of the aquarium. Water is running through this pipe in a siphon and at the end I have a little crimp. So I can pop that into my drain. I call this my drain, it's a water pup, which, that's a water pup? It's a water butt, which when full has a sump pump in it, which pumps it out into some storage containers so I can use the water for my garden or whatever. But I just let this trickle into the water butt. And then I have this attached on the side that when the water goes down, float valve engages, fills it back up with water. Simple, never have to do water changes. I can tee this off and have multiple things going on in other tanks doing the same thing. And my old fish room, for instance, all my tanks are drilled, so I could have these connected to the water. I haven't got them connected at the moment, but I had these connected, so they were just constantly drop, topping up and overflowing to waste. So I have this all over the place. So I use it on mega tank, I use it most of my tanks. I do some manually, because I just like to do manual water changes in some tanks, and then I have some set up so I don't have to worry about it. Um, like I say, in a fish room, it's a bit of a no-brainer, but if you can adapt this to your tank, even if all you do is use it to get rid of your dechlorinator, you will make your money back and it will make your life easier. So that was the fish room files number two, the HMA filter. Let me know in the comments if you're enjoying this series. I'll keep doing it. It's just little things that I'm doing around here that might be of use to some people and see if they make any use to you. Let me know. As always, if you click that subscribe button, you won't miss any future episodes. And if you come and join us Friday night, 9 p.m. UK time, every Friday we do a live stream, fun quiz and giveaways and things like that. See you then. Bye.